Hey guys, welcome back to our phase 365 concepts. This is the second video of the entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. In the last video, we talked about the basic concepts of SharePoint Online. We discussed what is SharePoint Online, what are the features and benefits provided by SharePoint Online. We talked about SharePoint versions and the difference between SharePoint Server and SharePoint Online. In this particular video, we will discuss the core difference between a team site and a communication site. When you create a site in SharePoint, you get two options and you will have to decide if you want to create a team site or a communication site. And before we create either one of these sites, we should know the difference and the use of each site. So the team site is basically a private space for a specific department or a project. For example, you are working on a project along with your team and you need a workspace where you can collaborate with your team members, where you can store all the information or the documents related to the project. Your team members can access that information. They can upload documents and they can collaborate with each other. So in this example, only the users who are working on the project will have access to that particular site. You can also create a team site on the basis of departments. Let's say you have IT department and you want to give a workspace to them where they can upload their documents and they can collaborate with their team members. Whereas a communication site is an intranet site which is used for the communication purpose. Communication sites are used to broadcast the information to the users. The communication sites are not open for the collaboration. If we talk about a team site, the users to whom we have given permissions, only they can access a team site. They can upload the documents on the site or they can make the changes within this site. But in case of communication site, a communication site is a read only site for the users. The users can view the information. They can read the articles. They can read the news, but they cannot make any changes within the communication site. Only the users who have author permission, for example, only they can make changes within the communication site. There are other differences as well between a team site and a communication site that I want to show you practically. So let's close this page. Now here I have a couple of sites. Test 2 is a team site and we have a communication site as well. So let's open both of these sites. Now, if you look at both of these sites, we can see a lot of difference within the layout. In the communication site, we have the menu bar at the top. But in case of team site, we have the menu bar on the left. In communication site, we can see a large area where we can post the information. But in a team site, we do not have this web part. If you go to communication site and scroll it down, you can see sections like news, events these sections are created by default when you create the communication site but in team site we do not have this information if you scroll it down we can mostly see the documents on which we have recently worked within this particular site now the other major difference between a team site and a communication site is when we create a team site it creates microsoft 365 group with the same name if you go to Exchange Admin Center and go to Groups, under Microsoft 365, we can see Test 2 Microsoft 365 group, which was created when we created the SharePoint site. And the membership of the team site is controlled through the Microsoft 365 group. But when we create a communication site in SharePoint, it doesn't create a Microsoft 365 group. Let's go back to SharePoint Online. Now in Teams site, we can see the type of group. Here we can see the public group and we can see the number of members as well for this group. This group is basically the Microsoft 365 group that is associated with this site. And the number of members that we can see here are the members and honors added within the group. But if we go to communication site, we do not see this particular information here. It doesn't show the group type or the number of members. Now, if you go to site permissions, we can see three type of permissions, site owners, site members, 
and site visitors. And if we go to team site, site permissions, we can see same level of permissions here as well. Site owners, site members, and site visitors. But if we expand them, under owner permission, we can see the owner of this site is the owner of test to group. And under site members, it says members are the test to members. So that means the membership is being derived from the Microsoft 365 group. But if we go to communication site, under site owners, we can see the owner is global administrator who actually created this particular site. And under site members, we do not see any members added within this particular site. So these are the basic differences between a team site and a communication site. So that is all for now. If you learn something new from this particular video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.